what sets us apart from others is just me. I'm just awesome. So how I incorporate a lot of um, food trends in my menu is we kind of have a vegan vegetarian menu that we also cater for all these dietary needs. And besides that, even with the regular menu, we also have certain items that you can use as vegan or vegetarian and all these other dietary restrictions that's happening. So we cater, this restaurant caters for all the dietary needs that's in play. On the fly menu change, oof, that's like a chef's dream right there. <laughs> so it's, it's all, it all depends on, um, we do like a menu mix. So the menu mix in, um, helps us find out which, is, which items are selling, which items are not. So on the fly, we kind of change certain things on the menu just to make sure whatever doesn't sell, so that we take it off or we bring, introduce a new item to it, which works great. If we have to eat it six sometimes, we kind of replace it with something else. Or if you don't like anything to replace it with, it's 8686. Can't, can't go back. So during our business service, I prioritize a lot of, of course, we have a lot of different um, cooks. We have a cook one, we have the leads. So that we kind of, I kind of delegate some of the tasks to all the people that are actually able to do it. So then that kind of alleviates the service. So then this person knows what they're doing, this other person knows what they're doing. So it helps the flow of service. And I guess, Happy. So between Expo and Behind the Line, I actually prefer, I don't think prefer is what I want to use because I love both. Because I started working on the line, then I kind of went to Expo. But being on Expo, it's like you are controlling the kitchen. If Expo messes up, the whole kitchen goes down. <laughs> so basically, so if, if, if the good is not a good Expo, it's kind of hard to control what's happening. So yeah, I love both. I can't, I can't pick one. All right, so I try, I mean, flop, um, a lot of the things that we do as chefs, we try to create certain items and create certain things that we would think the sh um, guests will be very happy about. So we did, I did one of this dish called the EB shrimp. EB shrimp, it comes to the head, it's kind of raw, you're gonna eat it in a certain different ways. So we kind of did it like nigiri style or sashimi style, just to see how the clientele, how the guests will react to it. That did not work. People hated it, people didn't like it, so we ended up taking it off. And we ended up doing a shrimp cocktail instead. It's the same shrimp, but it's a shrimp cocktail, so which kind of helped everyone else. The same night. Yeah, we actually, actually used the same EB shrimp as shrimp cocktail, and they thought it was totally something different. But it was the same, same concept. So balancing creativity and making it more profitable is so for me, simplicity is always key for me. You can use simple ingredients and make it look, wow, this is great. And also sometimes I guess if they don't know what you're eating, it's kind of hard for them to kind of figure out where it is. So I always try to make sure whatever ingredients I'm using, I use it in a way where the guest understands what you're having, what you're eating, so they can actually know and understand how the chef came up with it. And also making sure the food cost is always good on each dish, so. What I will be cooking for us today, and what I'll be cooking today will be, the first will be, um, we're gonna be doing the rainbow roll. So the rainbow roll, it has the spicy amachi inside, and on top is salmon tuna and yellowtail. And the next will be the sea bass, which is um, um, rosemary, Saffron risotto, incorporated with sea bass and uh, salsa verde. And next will be dessert, which will be our giant fortune cookie. Normally, we go to get a little giant um, fortune cookies. So we have a giant fortune cookie, which is filled with um, mango passion mousse and is garnished with um, tropical chutney. And we make our own special fortune for the fortune cookie. So we have a surprise fortune for you.
all ships are awesome. And what sets us apart from here is we are more of a diverse culture. Whatever we do in the restaurant, whatever the concept it is, we always try to make sure people come in the restaurant, we are taking them on a journey of what the restaurant is about and what the cooks and what the service everybody is about. So it's all about a journey when you come to Ocean Island. The dish that I'm particularly proud of creating. So it's a group of dishes that we have now. So I kind of introduced the jollof rice with the childhood thing I've been eating since back home in Africa. And um, so the jollof rice, so first I thought, oh, maybe people won't be fans of it, but at the same time, people love it. And when I introduced the jollof rice and the pepper sauce, which goes with the grouper, I didn't think it was gonna go well, but at the end of the day, people loved it, people enjoy it. They don't ask what it is, because they think it's rice, what's in the rice? Then conversation starts. It's more about a conversation, about I'm not standing what they're having, and it makes me happy. Introducing my childhood cuisine into the mainstream. So I'm, I'm from Ghana, West Africa, born and raised. I moved to the States when I was 19. I've been cooking since I was five, so a long time. Yes, I try to include a lot of the, my local cuisine, and it's not just about the whole dish, it's about like spices, ingredients, a lot of things here and there. So we use a lot of ginger, we use a lot of garlic, we use a lot of scallions, a lot of different things that I incorporate in any dish that I've done, just to make sure everything I'm doing, I'm bringing myself into what I'm cooking. Is walk and talk media the best thing ever? Yes, it is the best thing ever. And it's going to be the best thing if everybody pays attention and watch what chefs and everybody's doing around here. 